my biggest hopes uh, are around the awakening of individuals and, and uh, an awakened humanity that can live not just in peace, but in cooperation. Fear has been the biggest work of my life, actually. I was born into a family with anxious parents, my mother especially. And I was a fearful child, full of anxiety, and it's been a, um, a constant theme through my life, too not entirely consciously and with volition, but to, to walk into the fear, to walk towards it, to uh, uncover the truth or the untruth of it, and to um, overcome it. Working with his fears, Steve became a classified river guide, meditated for 10 days straight, and even consumed one of the strongest natural psychedelics, 5-MeO-DMT. The experience itself is very fast. Your ego identity disappears within seconds, if not in just a minute, I mean very quickly. And you go into pure consciousness, free of the body, free of the mind, free of the identity. And so for, for people especially who aren't oriented to this kind of understanding and experience, it can be uh, terrifying. It's like dying. Some people go through that tunnel of light. That's their description. They take it, they're zooming through the tunnel of light. They're going, holy shit, what have I done? Because they really are thinking that they're dying. The experience of full release from ego identity, from individuation, takes courage. And, and, um, and then you're, you're in the amazement of infinity. You're in the amazement of one mind and you're recognizing your connection to every aspect of life and with every creative power you can imagine. And it's clear that you are, it's incomprehensible. <laughs> and you, and there you are. And it doesn't last that long. <coughs> so what happens when you come back? When you come back, uh, different people have different experiences. For instance, what I was just sharing with you wasn't entirely my experience, but what others who were in the experience with me shared. But coming back is like the reassembling of your individuality. So you, you, you feel yourself, you, f you become more body aware, and your identity, layers of your identity come in. And I was, I was trying to avoid that as much as I could because it was so beautiful. Being without it, it was so free and loving. and um, So I took a very slow journey back. And Everybody has a unique experience because we're all kind of made up uniquely. And eventually you come back into your normal egoic identity, but with a vivid memory of where you've been and a relationship that doesn't seem to go away. So that universal oneness is in the back of your Steveness, you know? So, so I'm talking to you here as a human, as a normal person, or sort of normal. And, um, but in the back of that, there is the big picture that doesn't go away. I'm only f maybe five weeks into this experience, but it's that consciousness gets reactivated pretty easily and I'll find myself going deeper into that that consciousness with control of whether to go to go with it or to say whoa uh, I think I need to eat a steak <laughs> or something that will that will ground, ground me yeah. if it's an inappropriate time to go cosmic <laughs> I'll uh, do something that slows it down or stops it. But it's ha it happens almost daily, and um, just for brief periods of time. And it's a wonderful reminder of who I am. I mean, I think that, you know, people ask, how are we gonna change? How are we gonna um, make this a better place? And I have a firm belief that it's not through any external governance or 
you know, external, change the laws, change the rules, change the, the, the way we live so much as um, change the way we think, change our self-identity, change our um, relational existence to include all the people, all the plants and animals and the earth itself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm.